Welcome to thermodynamics. Um, and everybody's hotly anticipating what in the heck is going on with that. So what? Uh, no. So two fifteen five hundred. Um, did we go over this one? Yes. Okay. Good. That was the end of that problem. We should probably start chapter six. Um, Okay. Okay. So pressure is 500. So we have some questions on tape. I entertain questions uh, related to exam today, right? Yeah. Yeah. And if there, you have questions about that, here I am. Um, if there are no questions, and we'll start. We'll just not get farther behind on on what we're talking about. Okay. We do have a question. I have a few. Okay, Tago, what we got? Okay, so the ones you, the, there's two tables that you posted online that we right. did, we did the, I think we did both of them in class, or at least yeah. one in class, yeah. and then there's tables in the home, okay? Right. The one that you put in the class is for the R134A. Okay. Yeah, and then you gave the temperature negative 8 and the pressure 500. We found the volume, and then it has the phase, is like a uh, compressed liquid, soup cooled liquid. Right. That's. That's, um, so how do you know the phase? How do you know the phase, basically? And then I have right underneath, and then the very next one is 30, and you give us the 0.22. I was able to find the pressure, and then it has a saturated mixture, which, again, I was asking how is it how do you know it's a saturated mixture, how to find it, and, and if, do we need to find the X for it, for the exam? Are we going to need to know how to there find is, the X? Uh, yes and no. On the exam, do we need to find uh, the quality? Uh, there's one problem that's all about finding quality, and there's a problem with the table, and it's, I don't recall, no. Okay. On the table, it's going to be saturated or not. And um, then and then when you when you say the quality, you uh, you refer to the one um, on table 428 of the homework, like uh, <clears throat> the condition. It has the pressure, temperature, volume, entropy, and then the condition. And then has the X for it. Is Condition, that would be like the state. So, I mean, how do you define, is it liquid, is it? But the answer is, is like 0 0.650. Yeah, so what's going on? If you, have, if you have a pressure, and you look at the temperature, and so given the pressure, this is R134. If the temperature is above this, it's not in saturation. Because hold on, hold on. It's, it's like above its boiling point, so it turned into a vapor. Okay. So say that one more time. If you look at your pressure, okay, and you're given the temperature, okay. If the temperature is above the saturation, above, like above the, the boiling temperature, this is the boiling temperature at this pressure for this stock. Okay. Think of this as the boiling temperature at the pressure. Okay. If the temperature is above it, it's in superheat because it's not saturated. What if it's below it? If it's below it, it's just like hot water. Or <coughs> it's below this, it's not saturated. It's all liquid. So that's like super cold or whatever. Okay. But if you don't just have the temperatures, you can look at these other properties. And if it's at this pressure, and you've got an entropy or enthalpy value that's between these the two numbers that go with it. Then part of it's liquid and part of it's vapor. It's between these two, so you know you're in saturation. So now you know you have the temperature because you're in saturation. If it's outside of these two numbers, it's like liquid that's at boiling temperature would have this much enthalpy. But if the enthalpy is less than this, you're colder. You're subcooled, and then you, it turns out because there's no phase change going on generally. The properties for some liquid that are, if there's a liquid that is um, underneath the saturation temperature for its pressure, the properties are going to be the same as a liquid at that temperature. And the only liquid we have at a given temperature is the saturation temperature liquid. It's, it's, it's all about temperature at that point. So. Um, treat subcooled 
density and energy, that's the same as saturated liquid at that temperature. I mean, once, once you get into, that, that, that's why we don't have tables for subcooled liquids. They're going to have the same property as a saturated liquid at the same temperature. Um, but that saturated liquid at that temperature would have a different pressure. So if the pressure is, you know, it's, they'll give you a pressure and they'll give you a, anyway. That's starting to get too complicated. I, I'm not going to, yeah. Uh, I think I'm just missing a formula in my head. But if you have a temperature and you have the specific mass and it's in a mixed formula, where do you get the pressure from? If there's, if, if it's a saturated mixture, yeah. then you have a boiling temperature, whatever that pressure is, it's, the, it's in the saturation. So if you know the temperature, then it has to be, there's only one pressure that can have that temperature and be at the boiling point, at the saturation point. There's only one, if you have one pressure, it can only be at one temperature. So if you're in between, gotcha. it's in between any of those values, then you yeah, know the temperature and the pressure. Say again? It's independent of the quality, like no matter how much uh, you know how to find quality. Yeah. Think about a, a pot of water boiling. I have no idea. At at some pressure, at an atmospheric pressure, it boils at 100 degrees C. It will still be boiling at 100 degrees C at that pressure, whether the pot's full or empty. It'll still be when the pot gets empty, then the temperature starts rising. But the, the temperature pressure stays the same, even if it's all saturated liquid or all saturated vapor. But if it gets out of the saturation zone, then the temperature changes. So that's how Coke, you, you know how waffle, waffle uh, this is like not on your test, but how waffle irons work basically is you set the temperature for the, the waffle to flatten. And there's a little light that comes on it tells you when your waffle's done. What it tells you is when. So the light goes off because it came up to temperature. Why did it come up to temperature? You just cooked all the moisture out of it to the point where, you know, as long as there's moisture in the waffle batter, the, the waffle itself is going to be at like 200 degrees Fahrenheit. When all the moisture goes, then it starts rising, and then the platen starts rising. When it comes up to the temperature where it's nice and golden brown, it turns off. And the light changes. And you're using the, the light is just an indicator when the heater's on, and the heater's only on if there's still a bunch of moisture in your waffle. Um, so if you have a value that's between saturation values at a given temperature or pressure, if they give you the temperature and they took a value that's between two things, then it's that pressure. If it's outside of this, if, if uh, oh, let's, let's do, it works for any of these tables, but let's do water just because that's a little more familiar. I just realized I was confusing the, uh, how you calculate the specific volume that's in between there. I was confusing that formula with calculating the pressure. Which is why there's, yeah, there's interpolation. It's yeah, I was different. trying to interpolate something. So, um, and there's really only two things that we have. Um, Serious uh, tables for the, the world has um, tables in this, but your textbook has it for water and for refrigerant. R134. There's a whole every every substance they have tables like this that you go to NIST and you can download. Even these are truncated tables. You know they'll have for every degree in, in the NIST tables. It's like a book. It's the same concept, but it's just it, you know. They didn't want to pay for all the papers just to put it in your textbook. Um, but say we have something and it's at uh, 100 kilopascals water just because you know what that is. What if we do, can you give a concrete one from the homework? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. so uh, table 422, and then it gives uh, temperature 50. Next step, it's pressure in, uh, in kilos pascals, then the volume in uh, meter cube per uh, kilogram, and then the phase description. Okay? okay. So the first one gives a 50 temperature, and the volume 7.72. 7.72. Okay. The second yeah. one is 400 pressure. It tells it's saturated vapor. And the last two gives us a temperature and pressure. 
The second from last, temperature is 250, pressure is 500. Hang on again. Temperature is sure. 250. Uh huh. Pressure 500. Okay. And temperature okay. 110, pressure 350. So I. And I, this is water? Yes, sir. H2O. Because that makes a difference. It would be different. It'll be different for uh, H2O. I already, yeah. like the very first line already, I couldn't find 7.72. Okay. And that's entirely likely. Um, so something like this could realistically be in the test, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, I would start at 50 degrees C. And is 7.72? Was it? Yeah. Correct. I'm looking at saturation as a temperature. Um, no, that's pressure. Wrong table. That's a mistake. I guarantee you something you're going to make. Uh, I'm looking in the pressure table. At the top it says pressure in that mm -hmm. column. Whoops. You want to look at the temperature? I want the temperature table. The temperature table. First you have a temperature table and then you have a pressure table for saturation. Depending on if the round number is temperature or pressure, they're the same. They're just kind of in the lead. They're, they're the same data. There's, there's one's pressure and one's temperature. And you know, here's round numbers for temperature and here's weird numbers for pressure. The other one's got round numbers for pressure. But the properties are the same. So here's 50 degrees, and here it says, well, 12.026 um, is specific volume for if it was all vapor. So we have seven something. 7.72. If it was all liquid, it would be 0.001. Okay. So I'm between these two. Okay. So you add them up and divide by two? Uh, no, that, that means between these two, that means I'm in saturation. So now I know the temperature, or now I know the pressure. And with that data, I can find the quality. But if they're just asking for what we know now, we're saturated, and we know. Um, just as an example, would you mind the quality on that one? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, so it's a saturated mix. And I will do that. And what we know it is a saturated mix. Sorry, sorry. Can you go over that? How do you figure out a saturated mix again? It's between the two. Okay. If it was saturated, you have two. It can be liquid or you can be vapor. And if you have a mixture of the two, then it's a saturated mix. So, and if it was vapor, it would be all the way up here. Uh, if it was liquid, it would be all the way down there. If it's in between, some of it is turned into vapor. So if it's the exact number underneath the saturated liquid, it's saturated liquid. If yeah. it's anything, if it's like underneath the vapor, it's the exact number, saturated vapor. Anything in between, it's a saturated mix. Yeah, so if you're outside, if it was a 13, okay. it would be beyond or, saturated. It would be, it would be uh, super, super heat. heat. And, you go and if it was before, table. it would be super cool. Super cool. And so if it was, and that's the other thing, it will compress, right? Uh, yeah, because 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 if it turns out that it's uh, say 1.008 instead of 1.001, and if it had been the number been this pressure at 1.001 you know, or 0.08, you go, oh god, you know, that's more dense than that. So it's it's not saturated liquid. You go look for 1.0. Oh, there's 1.0. It's at, but now I know my temperature is 40 degrees. If it was in saturation at 7, this would be the saturation pressure. But we were told it was or saturation temperature. And that's the pressure. There's the temperature. So <laughs> we're <laughs> having more pressures. You're on temperature right now. Yeah, whatever I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Well, it went down to eight. That means now we're a lower pressure. And at saturation, we have to get that, that pressure. But we know that we have this temperature, and we're at a higher pressure. <coughs> or we're at one place. Yeah. It's, it's colder. It's got dead, more dense. It's colder. Okay. So the, when saturated liquid, you just sort of follow the density down to the te temperature. Okay. So when you face with this problem, kind of problem like other sides calculating the quality, or we're going to have to like down the ideal gas equation or anything like that, or is it all going to be from the... There's no ideal gas equation in this test. There will be elsewhere in probably the next test or whatever. We haven't really gotten ideal gas calculation. 
much, yeah. But can you see, can you figure out how to find a 7.72? Yeah, so here's um, x. Question is, how much of it is, and let me let me take down some of this data before I... Um, so like if you flip that form, like you were giving the 50 and the 12.352 and then calculate, uh, or, never mind, I'm just the yeah, specific, the, the X, whatever. So what's going is, if it was all liquid, it would be this much. What liquid is left is still, however much is there is still that dense. The vapor that's there is this dense. So some of there's the mass is there. There's a mass that's this dense and a mass that's this dense, and they're mixed together. And together, neither one is the total. So it's going to be in between those two numbers. But if you're given the temperature and the pressure, and they're both like they match up on the saturation, you wouldn't be able to find like the specific line of phase description without more information, right? <coughs> because you wouldn't know how much is vapor, how much is yeah, all you know is it's in saturation. Yeah. You have to have something else. That it, it, it might give you a temperature and say saturated liquid. Mm -hmm. yeah. In which case, now you know the pressure and you know that you know that. But yeah, if it just gives you the temperature pressure, you know, yeah, saturation, so what? You tell me more. Exactly. But if you have temperature, pressure, and quality, yes. you can, yes. that's what I want to know. How do you, that's how do you why. Know that's <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. In saturation, we don't know unless we have that quality term. Tell us where we are, how much of it boiled up. So that's why that's why this quality term happens in saturation. Because it makes a huge difference if if you know the difference between saturation and uh, liquid and saturated vapor is 209 to you know 2600. That's like that's more than 10 times difference. And you need to know where you are in that range. The quality tells us where we are. It's either saturated liquid, saturated vapor, or the mixture. And most of the time, it's a mixture. Can we do a quality? Um, a good example that would be my homework for what he's asking is table 28, the second one. Table 28? Yep. <laughs> It gives you like 0 0.650, gives the pressure and the yeah, temperature. Okay. Maybe you'll find the volume. We'll, and we'll do that one next, definitely. Let's let's see, where did the quality come from? But, but so here's, this, let, let me get the, the numbers 7 down. 7.72. 1.001008, is it? Um, just to see, no, uh, 10, 12. And um, 12.026. And those are all meters cubed per kilogram. These are all per. We can see your numbers. Yep. I'm just looking down. So, that's what we got going. Now, I want to know how, how can we figure out. This is between these two, but how far between these two? So there's a distance between these two, a number. If you subtract this one from that one, that's the range. And if you subtract this one from that, that's how far into that range it is. So you know, here's the whole up to 12 range. That's like the full range. And now I want to know what portion of that range goes up to 7. That's all that we're doing, really. So I'm going to say, I'm going to write it out. So my actual value minus the value for the liquid is how far into the range we are. And the vapor value minus 1, because some of it's vapor, some of it's gone all the way. Not all of it has. That's quality? So that's, what, that's how you come up with quality. And it turns out this works not only for specific volume, but it works for uh, enthalpy. So usually, it works for all of our properties. <laughs> so it's not temperature and pressure, but all the other ones. It's the actual volumes that the first one is. Yes. Go 
and so that gets us whatever it gets us. Just like that a little bit. Yeah. So I just said this is how far this is the liquid value, here's our actual value. Here's the liquid value, here is the vapor value. It's all that's gone there, and that's, that's the total range you can see that the mass proportion is going to be proportional to this how it's basically how much turned into vapor. So when you say that, that works for H2, what do you mean? The enthalpy value. If if you find the end of that, the, the quality using volume, yeah. you'll also find the quality the quality you can then use is the same proportion to find the actual value for the mix the enthalpy of the mixture. Because oh, okay. it's not all it's not all liquid, it's not all gas. Yeah. It also works for entropy. So you see you mean doing H actual minus HF and then H G minus H. You just subtract X and when we get to N trophy, it's the same deal there. You're just changing your variables and yeah. equations. And so you, you can use any of those so generally what happens is you know N trophy and use it to find the volume, you know volume you can find N trophy or whatever. So we're using one to find this and then we use this to find the other. And the lift, the reason that is, is because we're all of them are specific values, right? So yes, and that's the whole thing about the specific. It makes life easier. And when so you're all done, you want to know what the total is. You multiply the final value by mass, and now you get total volume, total energy. So in this case, to find the 772, instead of doing the actual volume, we just did an X in there. So we did X minus the vol the minus VF over VG minus VF, that's how we found. And then instead of putting 7.72, we solved for F. <coughs> I'm just, I still don't know. I'm, I'm not following you. I still I, don't know how we found the volume of 7.72 meters cube over. It was in the book. It was the problem. Right, so he just gave us to us, he could have given him any. I, I, I could change it right now and say, oh, let's put it at 8.5. Oh, okay. It's going to be a different I thought answer. it was a specific something that No, no, no it's, it's just a random to, to make your life difficult. Great, he did make it difficult. Problem, the switch, though, when you were given X and yeah. the uh, temperature pressure, yeah. they could ask to find it. Yeah, we'll do that next because that was. Yeah. yeah. So let's, yeah. let's finish this one. Okay. Um, what does anyone have numbers on that? <laughs> so that means 64% of the mass of that liquid is expanded into vapor. And 30, 64.2%. So that's what it means. It's a mass thing. It's a mass percent. And that's what it means. And we'll do a couple of these other ones here just quickly while we're, um, and then we'll get to that. Let's make sure we don't miss the other one. Um, so next one, we got saturated vapor, and it's at 400. Um, well, that's, if we know it's saturated vapor, and uh, 400 kilopascals, we just look up 400 kilopascals. What is the pressure one? 400. 400 kilopascals. Down there further. And the saturated vapor, it's going to read it right off the table. 046242. Oh. Temperature. Pressure. 400. So here's, here's the data. It's a saturated vapor, so there's here. It's the only way it can be saturated is if at this temperature and that pressure they're related to the vapor that's going to be this for the volume. This one 400. I found 143, no problem. And the volume, um, also, and the volume is 046242 because saturated vapor. Yeah. So it's the exact volume. But then the next two, I wasn't able to find out the yeah, volume so the next, or the face. So the next two, I bet you, well, let's look at how we would look those up. The next two, let's look at the <coughs> 500. 500 kilopascals. Um, temperature is one. Temperature is 250. It's 500. If it's in saturation, it'd be 152. So it is saturated vapor. But it's hotter than that. So, so it's saturated vapor. It's 250. So 
it went to saturated vapor and then we heated it up some more. It's in superheat tables. If you go to the superheat tables, is bundled with blocks of bipolar ferrite. Yeah. 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 Ye
So at 130, oh, how to find um, 130 degrees. That says uh, we've got pressure is 270.83. It's the only thing it could be if it has that quality. Um, and now we want to find 65% of the way from so this value to that value. And also we want to find, this is what has the uh, enthalpy, we also want to find 65% of the way from this value to this value. Now, one of the things you have to do is subtract these two. They did it for you already. That's the column in the middle is nothing more than subtracting these two. They do it so much they just included that column. They could have included it here too. Fine. But they didn't. They could have been, um, not put it here. But that's the, the only reason that there is one less step between the two. So I'm going to. Um, so I'm going to do it. Whatever. And I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to actually calculate. Uh, 130. 546. Okay. Okay. Is there another way to find it? Um, okay. That's how you do it. Okay. So let's do one, for example. That's fine. Any of those have volume on the one? That's one. Yeah, this one is X. All right. 21. Is that a value for that one? I thought it was about separating vapor, so it's one. All right. We'll solve this for a specific volume and do the same thing for enthalpy to finish out the table. Calculation is approximately the same uh, with different numbers. This pressure, though. So I need to solve this. Here's the definition of the quality of 200. This number. 200. Multiply both sides by the bottom, the bottom's over there, and x times this count. And then add this to the other side. So this base value plus 65% of the difference is what the formula comes out to. In this case, HF is. So we got um, 0 0.001, 0 0.070. Yeah, that's the difference. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 0.60. 
65 percent. So you know, with this relationship, that, that gets you there. And if we do that with enthalpy, <coughs> And you know, this is the sort of stuff we were doing in the R134 lab. So if you weren't, if you were just taking down numbers and not really following along, then take another look at that. And that's exactly what we were doing with that. Was how much mass is in it? How much, what's the quality? Take the quality from the volume and use that for the quality on the enthalpy. And then we found out how much energy it was and we did an energy balance. And I just went ahead and used the, the, uh, the HFG value that they had in the book, which was between these two. Um, we call it HFG, but it's really HG minus HF. It's all it is is they just made it so you don't have to put, punch ten more digits in your calculator. Probably twelve digits. So. Um, Starts off with the liquid. It was all has the amount of energy of the liquid, plus 65% of it has the latent heat, which is the difference between how much energy went into the vapor uh, on top of how much energy is in the liquid at that temperature. So that HFG value is also latent heat, so it's the latent heat number. <coughs> So, uh, are we expecting somewhere around 1900? So, of the mixture, that's how much energy it's containing relative to wherever the, the zero point is. Uh, in this case, ice water for water. Would be that much energy to get one kilogram of it into the condition that it's 65 percent vapor at that temperature at that pressure. And how much are you going to do with it? In the, in the test, uh, the, the chart, I don't have quality in there. It's either saturated liquid, saturated vapor, superheated or not, or you know, below the saturation. There is a problem. It's about quality. And that's walking through essentially the stuff that we did when we were doing the R134 lab. Is I give you a mass, I give you a volume, and you tell me what specific volume it is, tell me what the quality is, tell me what the enthalpy, what what this enth what the actual enthalpy of it is, and then here's how much mass, you knew how much mass it was, so what's the total amount of energy? Um, yeah. that, okay. Just for my own sanity, though, for this, you would only have three sig fills. Right. Because that's uh, why I learned it to uh, 1,000 or 600. Yeah. Because it says uh, 0. 0. 0.5 or 650. Oh, 650. Yeah. You don't need have Yeah. Three. So you, you probably, you probably, I mean, you've got five digits there, I've got five digits there, and this is three digits. Three digits is as precise as we located earlier. And yeah, we probably didn't get, we probably had more digits than that. that yeah, it would have gone out of like six one, two, nine, eight. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a difference between mathematical precision and then how much data precision you have. Um, but yeah, so that's got more digits, but this is more precise. We only know these three. The rest of it's a guess. Because the data wasn't that. If you only know three digits worth of precision on how much the HF and HG is all here, huh? Under the um, enthalpy, it's it's a column in the middle. If you look there, it says at uh, 130 degrees C, it says HF temperature 130, right there. HF and it says HF 54638, uh huh, 2720, and then we're in the middle 2173. Yeah, and that's my. 173.7 is just, it's straight up the table, it's just the difference between these two. 
Okay, in the 1960s is how much? 1960 is between these two, and this value is 65% of the way between these two. Because 65% of the, of the liquid turned to vapor and carried with it this much energy. And so that's what it's all about. Well, it's just how far did you get from the one end to the other? So does the test for each of the chapters like stuff that's in chapter five? Um and not really. Unless maybe if we talked uh, efficiency there, there's one there's one there's thing a thing about efficiency on the turbine, not about tables. Yeah, yeah, I was wondering about that because all the examples are just four. Yeah, it's mostly about four. That's Obviously, that's like those are the biggest questions. That, that, that's the most crucial thing because if we can't do the tables now, when we start using them, it's like total pandemonium. Uh, there's a thing. There's there's going to be fluid, you know, rho g h calculations. How many people like get that problems with that? The, the other two problems have rho g h calculation. One is how much power or or uh, and fluid power, pre uh, pressure times a volume flow rate gets you fluid power. Yeah. That that might be um, was fluid power. Oops. What the heck? That didn't help. Um, We had calculations on this. I don't think it was so much chapter five. It might have been like chapter one. Fluid power is some delta pressure times volume flow rate. Uh, kilopascals times meter cubed per second. Um, and a Kilopascal is one kilo newton per meter squared, and the meter squared takes two of those out. You end up with a kilo newton meter per second, which is a kilo joule per second, because a newton meter is a joule. So if you have a flow rate of fluid. At some pressure difference on that's flowing through at some pressure. Um, that's the power in the water. That's the, the water power available. The turbine may not be, make use of all that, so if there's an efficiency factor, think about is the turbine output bigger or smaller than this, and that's you know your efficiency is the power. Uh, what you get by the what cost you or output over input, and this would be the input of plain old fluid. So if you have an efficiency, um, Other ways of looking at that efficiency is what did you get out divided by what did you put in? It could be work in terms of work, in terms of power. Power is how fast, work is how much. Um, and what's out is the shaft power of the turbine. What's in is water power, and that's your water power. Shaft power. <coughs> And you do, this is more than you need to know probably at this point, but the torque times omega is shaft power. So, you know, your engine is so many foot pounds, it's 3,000 RPM. It turns out the torque curve on the engine is all that matters because it's matter by RPM. And 
If they give you the torque curve, you can do the power curve. If they give you the power curve, you can back into the torque curve. The torque curve is all that matters. Torque times RKF. Um, so, <coughs> that should help. All righty. I wish my dog would have split that spray by its stomach this morning. That'll do. Again this morning? I wish. No, no, I wish it would have. Oh. This morning. I would have had an excuse. Oh, no, no, no. no. That's, <laughs> that's, not, that's not a good, I mean, that's, yeah, not a good excuse. What? That's the way it's my weekend. It's the whole steel smell. I Googled it. It says it took two to three weeks for the smell to cool me off. And they spoil the shit for the company. Hey, yes, sir. I had a question. So Q is the heat. Putting it in like so it could be, so it's mass times the internal energy, delta internal uh, energy. Uh, specific, uh, specific uh, mass times specific uh, energy, uh, energy in the system. Uh, yeah. That constant yeah. volume. So this is CV. That'd be CV. Okay. For enthalpy, it's CP. I know. I wish it was I went outside. I went outside. It didn't the all. It wasn't all about temperature. It also moved. And enthalpy takes into account. It totally did. It worked. It might have been done while it's here. Okay. And that's why I don't even use it. You probably won't see me using internal energy for much anything. Because it's built into enthalpy. Those, yeah. But, you know, change that to an H, it changes to C to P. And that's where the rubber meets the road. Because this one includes this one. Right. So that's probably what is more important. Yeah. That's where we're using C to P up there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got a quick question for you, just on the interpretation of what open nodes means. Nice. Um, if I want to have this data, do I have to write rewrite down some of these no. sample problems, or I can just have it printed out? You can have it printed out. Okay. That's how hard a test is going to be. Yeah, I know that. You know what I mean? No. The open one and all that, because, <laughs> yeah, it's going to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this, that's all I'm Every time I hear that. open node, I get yeah. worried. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I, my, my thought is, uh, generally... My tests aren't like that. Yeah. So as a test giver, <laughs> they're uh, they're more like there's people that are freaked out and they feel more comfortable because they got all this stuff, and chances are good you're not going to look at any of it. Well, what I notice is it. that it doesn't really help unless you know how to use the information anyway. Or how yeah. to find it that's, where it is. Yeah, right. that's, you that's that's can have a whole bit in front of you and it doesn't help unless Correct. you know how to use it. That's, it's also really hard to do a lot of these without yeah. being open to the book because yeah. you're needing a reference. You get that printed out tables for everyone yeah. in the test. Okay. I don't know. It's oh, I don't know. It's more practical.